afternoon. I'm here today with uh, Dejan, who uh, is on the schedule, but I'm taking over for giving a talk. And um, we're going to present to you our recent work on OmniExtend, or recent uh, open source releases in OmniExtend. And um, what you're going to see today and what you can use if you want to um, are two things we have released. This, um, first of all, a memory endpoint, so you can ex at, um, attach coherently memory um, over Ethernet via OmniExtend. What OmniExtend does, I will explain a bit later. And the second thing is we have an op open Python to OmniExtend translation layer, transparent bridge, which is integrated into CVA6. So you can use, take your CVA6 and um, put your program code, for instance, on the remote memory, and it will transparently run on, on the local um, CVA6 RISC-V core. Both are released on Apache 2.0 and are available on GitHub. And we also tested them both on FPGA so far. And um, you can also simulate them um, if you don't have hardware available. So what is OmniExtend or what is it trying to do? Um, it, it is a, um, an approach to scale out a single coherence domain over multiple hosts using off-the-shelf um, hardware. So we decided to use Ethernet, nothing too esoteric, which is readily available, everyone has it, and we wanted to see how well we can extend uh, coherence. The whole thing is built on the Tiling um, bus architecture, um, which is well known, I guess, in the RISC-V world and provides you with um, coherent um, access to memory, but also to non-coherent um, access to, to memory, and also atomics. And we, on top of that, OmniExtend encapsulates the um, tiling protocol and um, puts it into Ethernet uh, frames to, to distribute. And the goal of the whole thing is to get fast load store access to hopefully petabytes of, of distributed storage and build interesting systems based on that. So how could a system look like? Um, we, we, like we see here, um, we have um, different kinds of hosts. The red stuff you can download from us. The gray stuff is some more ideas you have. Like you could attach your host CPU via CXL, for instance. Now we have CXL.mem, so you can actually do load stores into the CPU, go into some kind of storage network interface, and then out to the Ethernet, which currently fetches the memory, uh, the remote memory, which could be whatever you want, DDR, HBM, some, some other non-volatile memories, whatever you need. Um, what I explained before, the CVA6, which you can actually download right now and use. Um, also user space software, so if you don't have hardware right now, everything I'm ex showing you today also works in, in user space, and we have the user space side to play around with. Um, and also, um, you could, for instance, put in a QMU and uh, play around this way with larger like Linux systems or whatever you want. So this slide is not there. Oh, now we go. <laughs> um, more in detail, um, the memory endpoint um, right now is targeting FPGAs and 10 gig Ethernet speed. Um, you can attach any memory um, over AXI, so um, typical DDR4 or HBM controllers with AXI work right away. Um, this one supports the full tiling, so it supports all the atomics, it supports burst mode, it supports coherent, non-coherent, all that of, uh, stuff, and um, provides you with the lowest point of coherence with a probe architecture. There is no dictionary um, involved. On the other side, the CVA6 Geomnix bridge developed by um, Lewis, um, and Chin is over there if you want to talk to him. Um, provides you with um, a RISC-V core, which transparently accesses the remote memory coherently. Um, it works with an open source FPGA. Um, Nick also developed by Lewis um, at 100 gig um, speeds and um, supports the full or coherent access over Omnix 10 1.0.3. Um, to, to give you um, some, some help around that um, to, to make debugging easier and play around with. Um, we also provide you with the Rust-based software library 
So you can directly just run it on your system, put it in a NIC, um, connect it to a switch where you, for instance, have another an FPGA connected, whatever, and directly do um, experiments with that. So how does OmniExtend look like? At a relatively high level view, I won't go into too much detail today, but just to give you an idea, um, we have um, the, the different types of um, requests uh, Omni uh, Tiling provides, like atomic, non-coherent, and coherent. And those are, let's see if I can get a pointer, wonderful. So those are mapped into an Ethernet frame. So apart from the normal Ethernet header, we have this TLOE frame header, which is used to provide out of sequence detection, dropped packet detection, flow control, all these kinds of things. So in the end, your hardware only sees the, what it expects. So the sequential packages, no drop packages and so on. That's all done with the TLA frame header. And then you can have a number of um, tiling messages. So each frame can um, contain multiple. So you don't have to waste um, a, lot of, a lot of overhead to, to um, send small messages if you, if you um, need to. Uh, okay, so a bit more in detail about the memory endpoint now. Um, this one implements the full OmniExtend 1.0.3 and also what I call 1.1, that's not an official name, but um, I made some uh, improvements upon OmniExtend which helps with system scaling. For instance, you can now um, create and close connections so you can have more dynamic system. The original OmniExtend required a static setup where every party knows every other party. And with this improvements, you can um, yeah, easier um, play around with connecting new devices and you usually don't want to, or usually don't need um, a connection from one like host system to a petabyte of storage, but you want to access a smaller part. So you can create connection to that node you need and then close it again. The whole thing is in full in RTL, so I use Pluspec system Verilog, um, which is luckily since like three years ago also fully open source under BSD3. Um, it's it's I, I would say it's a bit on a similar level as Chisel. It has some nice advantages um, over Chisel, I think. So if you're interested in open source um, RTLs, uh, higher level RTLs, um, maybe have a look if you only know Chisel. Um, the whole thing is pretty device independent. Um, I tested it on a variety of Xilinx FPGAs mainly because that's what I was have available, but the RTL itself doesn't use any um, any um, device specific um, things. So you can just port it, for instance, also on ASIC if you um, replace the SRAMs and so on, or on, on Intel FPGAs. And the whole thing runs at 10 gig for, for the open source release. And as mentioned earlier, attaches over XI to the memory. So how does it look like? Um, we get our 10 gig ethernet on the left, and then you have the Omni Extend receiver, which handles all the parsing for you. There are some metadata required for the um, flow control, for the uh, resend logic and so on, which is distributed to Omni Extend sender. And the tiling packages fall out of the receiver and there it's handled for by, um, um, by the different channel handlers. So you have different handlers for the cache Korean part, for the non-cache Korean part. You have um, some flow control credits which have to be handled. And, um, and then the whole thing is again um, packaged for sending out to other parties and um, goes out over the ethernet again. Now, if you say you don't want to have an endpoint, but you want to use it for something else, for instance, um, attach your um, already existing tiling infrastructure, you can do something like this. That's not included in the open source, but it's relatively easy to do. You replace the part which does the tiling handling for the endpoints, and um, you basically get straight out tiling and can use that. Um, in your own design and get the Omni Extend part pretty much for free. The whole thing is as open source as I could make it. So the whole RTL is um, open as the Pluspec compiler is available. All the um, libraries I'm using are open for the simulation. I'm using Rust, which of course is open. 
Of course, on the synthesis part, um, well, I use mainly Verilog, uh, Vivado um, for, for the exciting designs, but you could use your favorite open source um, um, flow if you want to. And um, the GitHub right now, if you don't want to compile it yourself, you can also get a Verilog release um, from, from the GitHub, so you can directly plug it into your, um, into your designs. And on the right here, you see how it looks like. So um, it has some CDC. So we have um, receive and transmit um, clock domains. And we have a clock domain which handles um, the data path itself and, and all the processing. And then just the uh, stream interfaces for Ethernet. So it uses AXI stream at 64 bits width and um, the AXI master interface, which is used to access the memory. And on, then there's a configuration interface which you can use to reset the core, um, change the MAC address, stuff like that, and um, expose that. To play around with that, um, we're also providing a software implementation which um, pr um, includes the whole part with, uh, of the requester. So um, all everything that's necessary to do, for instance, an atomic uh, read or um, an atomic operation or read or write, Korean, non-Korean, written in Rust. So it supports all the tiling 1.8.0 features and um, is very useful for debugging um, and also is integrated in a full system simulation. So if you um, don't have hardware, I will show how that looks like later on, um, you can use the simulation. And apart from the library, I include some tools. So we have the OmniExtend RS, which uh, bundles all the, the library functions. And then I have a TUI application, which you can use to peek and poke, you can do cache um, requests. I will show a little video later on. There's also bitload, um, which just dumps the file onto the remote memory. So you can use that to load a binary for your CVA6 execution, for instance, for your RISC-V. And a configuration tool when you want to read the status registers. So the simulation itself um, looks like this. I'm, I'm using the virtual Ethernet stack from Linux, so you can attach um, a variety of applications to um, to to um, yeah, virtual network interfaces, like the terminal user interface, some other custom user space software. You can also um, attach Wireshark to it. We have an OmniExtend plugin, so if you want to analyze the, the Ethernet traffic, um, that's also available. And you can also um, plug in the endpoint simulation, usually running at um, for, um, the um, PlueSpec simulator itself. So PlueSpec comes with an own, its own C++ based simulator, or you can run it in Verilator or whatever you prefer. So how does it look like? Let's see if I can start this video. Does it work? Nah. Amazing. Does anyone know how I can start a video on a presentation? Uh, let's quickly leave that, move it over. Uh, sorry, PowerPoint. Ah, there we go. So that's a bit small, you won't see anything. <laughs> but uh, as soon as it starts, so you get, um, that's a script I provide, so if you want to download it and just set it up. Um, uh, can I zoom in a bit? That's what you get. So you get, let's say, four windows, and then the simulation runs on the top left, and you have three terminal user interface uh, windows, and in those you can, for instance, connect to the, um, to the endpoint, and then you can do a variety of um, reads and writes. You can play around, see how, like we, we get a trunk now, so we can write this cache line, and then we read it from another. Now we get a trunk here, and this one is invalid, and you can play around. It's, it's quite nice to just experience how this, um, this um, coherency works. And the whole thing is also on the GitHub if you want to see it in actual <laughs> uh, good resolution. Let's see if I can go back. Well, okay. Now I just have to be able to share, to switch slides again. 
Okay, that doesn't work anymore. Amazing. Okay, now it works again. Okay, so if you've done your software simulation, you can go on and do the whole thing as you did in software and hardware. You just replace the virtual Ethernet interfaces with your actual network interface uh, cards and an Ethernet switch. You can use your um, off-the-shelf hardware um, at 10 gig, at, at 100 gig, depending on what you have, and um, do exactly what you did in the simulation also in, um, in the real thing. I have some numbers for sh to share for you so you get a rough idea what the software can do, but be sure to read the caveats. Um, the protocol is really meant for hardware, so the software parsing is not that fast. And it's also not using stuff like dbtk, so um, that also would, of course, improve um, the performance. Um, but it's also not terribly slow. <laughs> so um, at, at four kilobyte chunks, you can satisfy, uh, like, use all the bandwidth you have available at a 10 gig uh, Ethernet interface over and attached to HPM2. And you can get a bit over 2 million requests per second at uh, 64 bytes, so a typical cache line size. Um, average time per request is just the total request, so I run it for a second and divide it by the runtime. It's a bit skewed uh, in that sense that, it's, um, that you can have multiple requests in a single packet. So um, that's why it's different from the latency, which in the best case is around four microsecond in software and um, average about 69 microseconds in software again. In hardware, of course, it's a lot faster than that. The second thing I brought you today um, is the Open um, Python um, to OmniExtend Bridge. Um, Again, developed by uh, Jin and his team at Levis. And this one uh, gives you a complete open Python CVA6 version, which transparently attaches to OmniExtend, um, uses their open um, source 100 gig Ethernet Mac, and um, is available right now in a tightly coupled version, simulation version uh, with the OmniExtend endpoint and runs on a VCU 118 Xilinx development board. The whole thing looks like this. You have the CVA6 at uh, the top, and um, when I get my laser pointer, attached to caches, um, then it's attached to a network on chip, and in this uh, network on chip, um, the, the bridge attaches to that and reads the coherency uh, protocol messages and um, yeah, translates it to OmniExtend and uh, sends it out over Ethernet. There is um, the, the bridge is available, um, looks a bit like this, so um, just pretty straightforward um, NOC um, translation layer you can use for your projects. Goes into a FIFO, translates this OmniExtend to the Ethernet protocol and then goes on um, to over, over the 100 gig Ethernet. What we have planned right now um, is an integration um, of the CVA6 into the socket-based simulation. Right now it's, it's tightly coupled, so it runs in um, your simulator, like Verilator, whatever, everything together. Um, we have to move that out so it actually attaches to the socket-based simulation as well, so it makes it easier to do full system simulations. And um, I'm also working on, on splitting out the OmniExtend um, endpoint um, to make it a bit more li library design to simplify your own designs. Um, but apart from that, it's um, readily, uh, ready to experiment. You can play around with it. And if you're interested, I'm happy to talk to you or help you set it up and play around with it. So that th said, thanks for your attention. and. Uh, if you want to have a look, um, those are the links to the GitHub uh, pages. And um, thank you. All right. If there's questions, I can I can run the mic to you. So I, I'm aware of this project since some time. Uh, it's a great project. Uh, I was wondering, on the tiling side, uh, uh, what what do you think of the future of tiling? Is it is it still moving forward? Uh, I think at this point, I wonder if you're the only tiling users. 
<laughs> Maybe Dejan can uh, give you an answer. So I'm going to sidestep the answer and ask you a different question. So this started because uh, we had no ports to attach our storage to, right? So we had these new technologies like page change memory and MRAP and so on that are byte addressable and non-volatile. So they're kind of in between an SSD and DRAM. They, they're cheaper than DRAM, but they uh, retain data like SSD. But on Intel, basically, there was no place to attach them because PCIe was just horrible, right? It was not up to um, the task. So uh, RISC-V was coming up and we said, well, can we make an interface be and stay open? And it costs about $200 million to develop a new chip for switching coherence, right? And we're a rich company, we're not that rich. And so we said, well, why not you just use Ethernet switch? And that actually works pretty well. So uh, the point of this is not to have Tilink be the coherence for risk -Fi. The point of this is to have a Ethernet framing standard, right? that will send coherence messages of any kind of protocol. So in this case, it's a four hop messy because that seems to be the, the base for all the university projects and so on. Uh, if anybody comes up with a nice messy or a Moesi uh, variant, I think it's very easy to change the mm. encapsulation. Right? But the thing that stays, right, you still have to essentially do what TCP is doing for you, which is you have to, you know, Ethernet doesn't uh, do things in order and doesn't, it can drop packets for, for you. So you can keep all the encapsulation uh, logic and the recent buffers and all that stuff and just insert your own message format and you have coherence running. Uh, but you know, for what it's worth, I mean, for hop messy is fine, right? If your algorithm scales, this will scale. Right? You, you can make it better by factors of two, but not by factors of 10 by changing the protocol. So yeah, to answer your question, I'm a believer in Tilink. <laughs> That's but yeah, the hear. whole thing is pretty modular, so if you um, want to change the protocol, there's nothing really um, limiting you to, to the tiling. Any more questions? Who's, uh, who's managing uh, Omnix then now? Who's managing it? I think it's still, um, which was it? Uh, Chips Alliance. Chips Alliance. <laughs> we have these changes to Omni Extend, but there's not yet in the process. If there are no more questions, maybe we can thank the speaker one more time. Thank you. Can the next speaker come up? Um, we'll just switch over. Can you all hear me fine? Okay, great. Awesome. Cool. All right.